Thank you. So we have, we have, a ch we have time for, I think, probably, Carlan, two questions maybe at most, just, for, just in terms of time. So I might open the floor up um, just, for, just for two questions in total, if that's okay, just because we're running a little, bit, a, bit, a little bit late. Sean, yes, absolutely. And you wouldn't mind addressing your questions to the, the panel. Hi, I'm uh, Sean Frain. I'm a, a youth facilitator with Belong To. Um, my question's for Dr. Eliza. Um, when speaking about the school districts, you said, as long as we don't tell anyone about it, we can do the work, and sometimes that's okay. I just, I just want to know, how do the teachers react to the training that you gave in the districts? Um, we have generally found that um, teachers are open to the idea. We, 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 inter we uh, surveyed teachers early on and found that the majority of teachers will agree with the statement that children in my classroom should be safe. They will also say, I don't know how to make that true for LGBT students. So um, I'm the daughter of a high school teacher, and I think that that common ground has been the key to a lot of success. And just to be clear, it's not always OK not to talk about it, but sometimes it's an important first step. Been pretty well received. We're, it, it's interesting in places where it's required, because there are plenty of people there who don't really want to be there. But usually, by the end of the day, they'll say, OK, I can see a way forward. So we've been very pleased to see that. Thank you so, thank you so much. Anybody else? Peter? Thank you very much to everyone. My question is to Minister Fitzgerald and to MEP um, Prendergast. Sorry for mispronouncing. Given that we are in a trio situation with Lithuania and Greece, and given that neither of them have a good track record when it comes to LGBT youth, how can we, and in, in this sense I include myself as youth forum, but especially in terms of your particular roles on the European Parliament level and the minister level, uh, and when you continue being part of the trio but no longer in the main seat, so to speak, how can we peer pressure Lithuanian colleagues into picking up this and continue LGBT issues, knowing the very, very difficult situation in Lithuania, a bit less difficult, but still difficult situation in Greece. How can we use the instruments that we have at EU level, the articles of the treaties of the communities where it says that there shouldn't be no uh, sexual orientation-based discrimination, and there obviously is in those two countries, at least in Lithuania in law. How can we pressure them without kind of putting them away? In a way, especially in the ministerial level, how can you manage that to that's exercise good. pressure without pushing them that's too a, far that's away? A, from that's a really good question. Very suitable political and diplomatic question from, from Peter there. <laughs> Very easy to answer. Um, uh, well, you know, I, I think what we're doing today is important. I think that's something that you should discuss later on this afternoon about continuities. I think continuities are really important. I mean, that's what this work is about. So I think it's about, uh, in the broadest sense, it's doing more of what we've done during our presidency. Um, it's about a strong Dublin statement. Um, it's about looking at areas for implementation. Uh, to be taken forward in relation to education, employment, uh, schools, and um, you know, making sure that it's in the ongoing dialogue around social inclusion. Um, that sounds easy. I know it isn't, um, but I think that's the only. These are the instruments, as you say, we have to hand. Um, it's about, you know, it's about every country playing its part, and uh, uh, it's about making sure that uh, this is a headline topic. I think the discussions this morning have been very, I found them very helpful. I must say, I've learned this morning. I think the framing of some of the issues around, you know, child protection, I think the framing around uh, the broader, you know, issues of social justice and inclusion, um, I mean, I think all of that just needs to be taken forward and built on. And at a political level, um, I think, you know, certainly in terms of the work we did on the youth uh, work, um, Implicit in that are the principles we've been talking about here today, and they have been adopted by the Council of Ministers, so I think it's about everybody playing their part in the ongoing Council of Ministers meetings. Uh, and, you know, I, the lobby needs to be kept up. There's no room for complacency. It's like so many of these cutting-edge issues we're discussing here in Ireland and internationally at the moment, it's about voice. I think voice is really important, and you know, meetings like this uh, encourage all of us to have the, that strong voice and to maintain it nationally and internationally. There's no magic; um, it's about the hard grind, and we've seen it works. 
Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And it's about getting, you know, the implementation plan into education policies. Minister for Education has a role to play. Uh, Minister for Justice, we saw Geoffrey making a suggestion about uh, laws in Ireland that need to be changed. I think it's, um, I increasingly feel from my experience as a minister that cross-departmental work um, is key. I've just come back from the Health Promotion Conference, uh, the World Health Organization uh, Health Promotion Conference in Helsinki. I was there for um, on Thursday and spoke on health promotion. And we're, we're discussing, you know, for example, the alcohol sponsorship issue here at present. I mean, I'd like to see in that area the kind of conversations that I heard in Helsinki uh, in relation to health promotion. I'd like to see those conversations being echoed in our discussion here. And, you know, you increasingly realise it isn't just about, you know, the Minister for Justice and Equality. It's about ministers working together and it's about commissioners working together and uh, we had a very interesting meeting in Dublin here with the commissioners with the commissioners for health and uh, uh, the the more social if you like uh, side of of, of the commissionership's roles and uh, I think increasingly at European level we've got to make sure that the social agenda gets discussed more Uh, otherwise you know the EU is seen as a you know the subcommittee of some bank Mm. Um, uh, and we really have to make sure that the social issues uh, get a presence as well as the economic issues. So it's about all of those things, I think. Thank you, Minister. There's not, not much uh, left to answer after that, but I would say that I, I did say there was 153 MEPs involved in our intergroup in Europe, and whilst we have a focus on uh, our declaration that we hope to get up and going in September, that is always an opportunity as well to acknowledge the work of LGBT in Europe, um, how great that they are in in actually raising awareness, how great they are at organising to get buy-in from other uh, countries and to get people that would be on the marginalised side of Europe as well as being on the marginalised side of maybe their orientation. So there's there's a whole lot of opportunity here. One of the, the things I did discover, and it's, it's very frustrating, I, I, I am severely frustrated by this. When I started to go into the schools to talk to young people, I thought, uh, I'm going in to talk to them, so I need to know what they want to talk about. So I went in in advance and I said, you know, each person in this room write down three questions about, it can be about crisis pregnancy, about sexually transmitted infections, it can be about identity, body issues, self-esteem, anything, any question, and you can be rude in it, it has to be unsigned, and I will just type them up and, uh, you know, we'll deal with the issues that come up, some of the things that come up I had to do a bit of research on myself. I thought I knew everything, you know. But uh, one of the things I did find that in the course of those questions that would come, uh, I met with the bulliers and the bullied. And it's frustrating when you are confined in a very compacted time frame to try and deal with issues that deserve much more time and much more focus that when you're in a general situation where you've got to cover the practical stuff, you've got to deal with everybody in the room, you've got to try and keep a balance, it's all about balance and it's all about making the focus correct. But I would love to think that there would be a forum where young people could have their issues and their messages addressed that wouldn't be like Talk To or one of those websites or, or you know, chat uh, forums that can be very damaging where there's, you know, because of uh, anonymized contribution that people feel absolutely um, at a disadvantage because if they're feeling vulnerable, uh, vulnerability sometimes feeds on negativity, which feeds on them feeling worse and worse, and they just think sometimes, in that moment, they just think, well, maybe there's nothing else for this. Maybe this, maybe I should just go. So it's it's very frustrating, but I do think that there is a a whole matrix of supports and systems operating. And the the agenda is to try and make life better for people. And I think, you know, it's slow, but we are trying to do that. And I think that uh, having our declaration, whilst the focus is going to be on homophobia in sport, there's a whole wealth of opportunity here to, to give many, many messages out there. And I think that's going to be important. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Phil. Yeah, and I think a very strong Dublin declaration or Dublin statement coming out of here will be very helpful, as the Minister said as well. So that, uh, that's it for our first opening plenary. And say a huge thank you to Phil, to Geoffrey, to Elijah, to Nevin, and of course uh, to the Minister as well. Thank you very much.